Welcome back to the channel. Got a little bit different video for you guys today. Uh, someone made a comment about wanting to go over uh, sort of what equipment we use and why we use it. Um, so we're just going to make a quick video running through some of the best equipment and when you would use certain things in certain situations. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with the Grenadier and we'll work our way back up to Assault because uh, I feel like Assault is what we use the most often. So we'll end it on a high note with that. So shouldn't take too long here, but just going through um, the weapons to start with that the Grenadier has access to. Uh, shotgun, pretty much never going to use that as your primary weapon. There's no reason, um, in my opinion, coming from the SWAT team that we're going to be clearing houses, making entry with a shotgun as our primary. Um, so, yeah, there's just no reason to do that. Uh, moving on, we've got the M16. Uh, it's going to have that long 20 inch barrel. Um, so for clearing a house, it's probably not the thing that we're going to want to use most, but you know, people did it in Iraq for a long time. So it's definitely doable. Next, we've got the M4. Um, this is where we're talking about what is most likely going to be used. Something like this. Uh, this is going to be a 14 and a half inch barrel, uh, probably pinned and welded if you're a civilian. And this just sort of gives you the best of both worlds of barrel length given the most powder burn to have the most feet per second while still being a pretty small package uh, that you can easily clear rooms with. Next up, we got the Mark 18. Uh, this is kind of going to be the go-to weapon uh, if you're in super close quarters just because of that uh, shorter barrel length. Uh, in these missions, we're not taking shots out um, to 300 yards, really. So you can definitely still do it with a Mark 18, uh, but it's definitely going to be best suited for close quarters. So... For the most part, your M4 and your Mark 18 here are going to be good. Um, down here, obviously we're using the Grenadier class, so everyone's got a grenade launcher attached to the bottom. So same thing goes for those rifles as it does for these. It's just going to be whether or not you've got a grenade launcher on there. So M4, good all around. Mark 18, going to be good in the close quarters. M16, definitely still doable. Uh, but a little bit more difficult to move around with that 20 inch barrel. Next up, we got the MP7. I personally have never shot one of these. Um, you know, obviously it's something that the SEALs used and whatnot. This isn't something that we have access to at my department, so I can't really talk too much to it. Um, in general though, I'd prefer to have a 5.56 rifle than I would to have uh, this caliber here. So. Although this is like a crazy buzzsaw that's going to dump a lot of rounds real fast. Uh, it's going to be a little easier to control just the normal AR platform. URGI 14.5. You know, honestly, this is the same thing as the M4. This is just a more modern version. So everything's going to be uh, very similar there when it comes to real world experience. This is just looks like it's going to have an M-lock M -lock rail as opposed to a uh, Picatinny rail all around so this is probably a little bit easier to shoot but at the end of the day the difference between the m4 and this is going to be pretty insignificant next we got a hk416 again we're still talking about really the same thing i know a lot of guys get down into the weeds on how this gun is better than that gun is better than that gun but you know really at the end of the day all these are going to be able to do the job just fine uh, so next we've got our MCX. Uh, difference here is going to be the operating system, of course. Um, it's not going to have a buffer tube like the typical ARs do. Um, it looks like this one's in 300 blackout. Um, so if you're using subsonic rounds here, uh, you're going to be able to be like actually silent uh, if you've got a suppressor on there. So this is definitely a good choice if you want to stay completely silent. Um, it's obviously got that 30 cal round, so it's going to do some damage for sure. So this is also definitely going to be another uh, good pick. And then next down here, we've got the XM5. So this is going to be that new new 6.8 gun. Honestly, I don't know too much about it. Never shot it, anything like that. So this is kind of kind of new world tech over here. So it's going to be similar to a 7.62 and a 5.56, kind of a little bit in between there. So it'll definitely get the job done, but... You know, what I can tell you about our SWAT team is that everyone is running around with either Mark 18s or M4s. So that's just what our department has. So 
moving on here, obviously, uh, use a suppressor if you can. You're just going to have to be aware that when you're in those close quarters, you're adding a few inches onto the end of the gun. Make it a little less maneuverable, but definitely better for uh, your hearing, being able to communicate, stuff like that. So next we can go to the type of rounds. Uh, we've got green tip. Uh, we've got the EPR and then the ball ammo. So, I mean, this is really just going to depend on your department and what they issue you. At the end of the day, you know, all of these are going to put holes in bad guys and do some damage to them. So green tip is uh, going to be able to penetrate some level three armor. So that's always nice to have. And then here, this honestly is going to kind of be a shooter's preference. Uh, you're not going to be rocking iron sights anymore. Uh, no one does that. So pretty much you're going to be choosing between a red dot or a hollow sight. I personally prefer an EOTech. Uh, but there's plenty of guys on my team that run red dots as well. That's personal preference all the way. I like a hollow sight just because when we're inside uh, close quarters, if you're within that seven yards, you can use the bottom of the reticle uh, as your offset instead of just having to hold into empty air uh, with this one. Next, you got a uh, Combat Optic 4X. So this is an ACOG. Uh, not too many SWAT teams are going to be rolling around with ACOGs. Uh, pretty much everyone's going to be using a red dot or a hollow. And then same thing down here, you've got the uh, Elkan 1-4. to It's a prism optic that gives you a good 1x and a good 4x if you want to switch between the two. It is heavier for sure than a red dot or a hollow sight. But at the end of the day, what optic system you're using there, it's really going to be user preference. Moving on to pistols here. Um, M9s, man, no one uses those anymore. Some people are issued M17s or M18s, you know, depending on whether you're military, law enforcement. Glock 19X, uh, this is essentially what I carry. Um, I carry a Glock 45, but it's going to have a red dot and a light on there. Glock 22, no one's carrying 40s anymore. Uh, some guys on the team are trying to switch over to staccatos using the 1911s, but, you know, Glock is kind of the gold standard. So here we've got a Glock 19 customized. That's what we're using here in the game, uh, just because that gives you the option to mount a red dot. If you're not using a red dot, you're wrong. Um, there's no reason not to with today's pistols. It makes shooting so much easier, uh, faster follow-up shots, your ability to stay target focused instead of focusing on your sights. Uh, that's a winner for sure. So. Here in game, we're using a Glock 19 customized because that's what gives us access to the red dot. Uh, but a lot of guys are just going to be carrying a Glock 17. For the ammo, um, you've got FMJ 115 and 124 grain. Uh, we've got a full metal jacket hollow point. Uh, and then we've got jacketed hollow point. I mean, that's uh, 147 jacketed hollow points, pretty much what everyone's carrying as duty ammo. Uh, so that's what we're using here. Next, we've got our helmet choices. Um, obviously, Santa Claus hat, not going to give you very much uh, ballistic protection. And when we go through the rest of these here, there's really no difference um, except for this high cut with the mandible armor. Uh, nobody has mandible armor uh, that I'm aware of that actually uses, uses a gun in real life. So we're definitely not using that. This is really going to be shooter's preference on low cut, high cut. Um, and then... This next gen helmet here we're honestly just using this in the game because it gives us the best helmet armor stats not too worried about the realism there but uh most people are going to have level 3a helmets that uh, are gonna be high cut so that there's room for your ear pro underneath uh, then we've got our nvgs on my team we actually only have a single tube we don't have dual tubes, but obviously if you had dual tubes, two is definitely going to be better than one, so you've got the better field of view there. Next up for our armor, here on the Grenadier, same deal. Uh, we're going to be rocking level four plates all the way around. Um, if you're not wearing side armor, you should be wearing side armor. Uh, a lot of what us wear on our team is actually going to be a level four plate in the front um, with level three a soft armor on the sides. Uh, which isn't really an option here, which is why we're not using it. But level four armor in the game is def definitely going to give you the best uh, coverage all the way around. These guys without side armor, it's just not the best idea. Uh, no one really uses extended vests, but you could definitely be using 
uh, level three with uh, side plates to get you a little bit better maneuverability. Uh, level four all around is the way to go for me here. Soft armor, we're not in patrol, so we're not gonna be rocking that. And then again, anything with no front plate, with no side plates is gonna be a no for me. All right, now we'll move into the equipment. So smokes, uh, they can be useful here in the game uh, if you need to cover a line of sight. However, you really wouldn't want to rely on the smokes and someone to not shoot through it. I mean, just because you drop a smoke, if there's an enemy waiting, they can just start sending rounds through the smoke. And I don't really want to run across that. So for the game, works pretty nice. Real life, all we're really going to be using smoke for is for like getting a helicopter to come in and land or something like that. Frags, obviously good. Should definitely bring some frags with you. Um, if there's no hostages in the area, this is an easy way to take out some bad guys. Flashes, should always be bringing some flashes with you in my opinion. Um, everyone on our team carries at least two, um, if not more. So it's a good way to make entry into a room uh, without, with a hostage or someone in there, um, it's easy to distract the guys inside, give you some surprise, uh, so that you can dominate the room quickly. Stingers. Uh, I know this is what some high speed teams use, but we don't use stingers. Uh, they're not reliable um, to actually have a rubber ball hit someone and have them actually want to surrender. Uh, getting hit with a stinger doesn't, I mean, it doesn't feel good, but if I was intent on killing you and you hit me with a stinger, that's not going to stop me. So I don't use these in the game. Honestly, couldn't tell you how effective they are for the place of the game but you know we're trying to use this game to train our real world tactics so we're not going to be using any stingers here slap charges uh these are good to go you know if you got a locked door that you need to get through then this is going to be a good way for explosive breaching that way you don't have to sit there and expose yourself trying to use a halligan trying to break in um, as long as we know there's no no hostages or civilians on the other side absolutely Use a slap charge to make uh, make your entry. So then we've got the thermal torch to cut chain link. Uh, I'm sure this works great in the game. No one no one's using this out here in the real world. Um, if you need to cut a chain link fence, you're going to use bolt cutters and you're going to cut the fence like that. Uh, next, we've got gas grenades. Um, I do carry these um, in the game sometimes. Uh, we don't really use gas grenades per se uh, we'll use a launcher which i believe we have coming up here soon so gas grenades are an easy way to try and get someone else to come out of an area smoke them out uh, we'd obviously always have our gas masks on a uh, little point in the game is that there's no option to like bring a gas mask or to put your gas mask on it doesn't make your soldiers shoot any worse or move any worse anything like that so we don't always want to use gas just because then you got to put your gas mask on and that just doesn't really help uh, your situation. Obviously, if you need to use it, we will, but it's it's decent. It's worth having in the toolkit sometimes. Next up, we got the decoy, uh, both at 115 and 75 decibels. Um, yeah, we're not going to use that. That's not going to that's not going to fool anybody in the real world. I'm, as far as I'm aware. These aren't really used in the real world. It's kind of just a video game thing. So I'm sure it works great. Uh, like you can see here in the little video to get people to run in one direction or another so you can flank, but uh, it's not something that we're gonna use uh, in the real world. Um, so those are our little equipments. Now we'll check out our large equipment for the Grenadier. Uh, breaching shotgun, absolutely a great tool to use. If you don't wanna use the slap charges, you can use this breach and shotgun. Uh, you're able to carry more ammo for it, so you can get through more doors. Um, you can use this if there's a hostage on the other side, uh, because the rounds that it uses aren't gonna, they're not like slugs or buckshot. They're specifically breaching rounds uh, that will disintegrate after they've taken out the locking mechanisms. So definitely if you're breaching doors, this is an excellent uh, way to get in. Next, we've got smokes, frags, flashbangs, obviously, if you need more, you can bring more um, slap charges. Same thing as before, wall breach. Uh, wall breach is one of the best things that the Grenadier class has access to. Um, this is definitely something that we use in the real world. If we know that there's a sketchy situation set up behind the door, uh, if we don't want to breach through the door for whatever reason, and we know that we have a safe way 
uh, with no civilians or hostages on the other side of the wall. We'll absolutely use a wall breach. Um, here, it's kind of hard to tell what exactly um, this is made of. Typically, we'll use like a water type charge uh, to get through a wall. Uh, so this is definitely equipment worth bringing. Next up, we got the dynamic hammer. Uh, this looks like that claw, uh, which we definitely do use often. Uh, usually we'll have a combination of like a halligan or a claw tool, something like that. Uh, a breaching, an extra way to get a breach in, uh, even if it's just a sledge or a battering ram. Uh, this is definitely something that gets used often and is it's typically not the primary means of entry uh, but someone in the stack is always going to have this um, in case there's a failed breach or something like that and we need to get into the room so dynamic hammer is definitely going to be a good good choice there next up we got the spy camera um so this is this is just straight up a video game thing obviously in this game as you can see down below in the little video plan it's good for the game but no one uses a spy camera in real life this is something out of the movies something in video games we're not gonna expose ourselves in front of the door and snake a wire under there with a camera like that's just it's something that we don't have access to and that's just made for the movies so probably great for the game but that's a zero in real life uh, next up we got the at launcher uh, this is not something that we have access to uh, as stateside police but uh you know, if you need to blow a hole in a wall from farther away, this is going to be a great way to do it instead of having to set, a, set up a wall charge. So, you know, I'm not going to say no. Just make sure your back blast area is clear so you don't uh, hit any of your buddies. And uh, I mean, I'm sure it's a great piece of equipment. It's not something that I've ever had the experience of getting to use. So next up, we got the gas grenades again. Now, this is more like how we actually deploy our gas. Um, so here we've got an explosive launcher gas launcher smoke stun launcher he uh, we got all all these different types so typically for our units uh we're not going to be rolling around with high explosives on the swat team uh in a mgl but this is our preferred way of deploying gas uh, we'll have the six rounds in the gas tube and you know chunk one at a time through whatever windows or however you need to get them in so in the real world this is the superior piece of equipment for deploying gas uh, same with smoke as before we don't really use that and uh we've got the stun stun guy here um we don't have a rotary stun launcher um uh, we'll typically just use a shotgun with a beanbag round or something like that um so again then we've got here it's m320 uh, we're not high speed enough to get m320s we've just got like a m79 um but same thing with all the other stuff up above like we're not using he um we're not we're not using anything that's going to punch through a wall um we could use we will use it for gas and then we would use it with uh bean bag rounds but that's going to finish up our grenadiers next we'll move over to our marksmen uh, here with their guns again there's no reason to be using a shotgun here we've got a dm rifle so this looks like it's uh, just going to be a 20 inch uh, 556. So that's one option. You got the scar here. Um, some guys like that. It's not something that we use on our team. M14. That's a little outdated. No one's actually going to be using an M14 uh, nowadays. And you've got the Mark 20. Um, this just looks like the uh, other scar. The 20. Scar 20. Uh, some people use them. Our department is not going to be using those, but M17, MK17, MK20, Scar 17, Scar 20. Uh, those are definitely something that people would be using out in the real world. Uh, M110. This is kind of more similar to what most most teams are going to be using. Uh, there's no reason for us to be using a bolt bolt gun uh, nowadays. Semi-auto guns are just as accurate, just about um, good enough for SWAT and combat applications. So we're gonna be using something similar to this. Again, we've got the XM5. Uh, it's just not something that we're using in the field currently. And then we've got the 338. Uh, there's no reason for our SWAT team that I'm aware of to be using a 338. Um, so this, this is pretty much what every everyone's gonna be rocking. So again, use the suppressor if you can. 
uh, all we've got here is the one option for our ammo. Then it comes down to the optic optic selection. So you're probably not going to be using a uh, 4x or 1 to 4. You're going to want a little bit more magnification than that. Here I've got a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 8 kind of user preference and whatever your department issues you. Um, 1 to 8 is going to be good for pretty much any situation that a SWAT team is going to be getting put into. Uh, probably not going to be using a 3, 3 to 10. Um, it's just kind of an awkward magnification range. You're still going to want to be able to take a good shot on a 1x. You're not going to want to have to be zoomed in all the way to 3.5. Um, 3 to 18. Uh, unlike this, this has probably got a higher likelihood of being used uh, with an offset red dot or a red dot on top right here. Uh, reason for that is, you know, the more magnification you have, uh, honestly, the better. I know there's a the old adage of you only need one X magnification for 100 yards, but if you're taking a hostage rescue shot or something like that, you're going to want to be able to dial in uh, super close so that you can make a precise and accurate shot. So this is definitely something that would be getting used in the real world. I think in the game, it's probably not quite as good as using a 1 to 8 uh, just because there's no option to have like a offset red dot or anything like that for when you're in close quarters. And then a 5 to 25, that's going to be a little bit extreme on the magnification range. Um, probably good to have, but just the distances that a SWAT team or someone's going to be operating in. 5 to 25 is going to be a little bit long, long there. Um, pistols, I don't think any options are really different here. These are all the same, uh, but then we've got like a BNT APC 9K Pro Dash G. Uh, this is just going to be pretty much any, you could substitute any uh, like TP9, something like that. Just a 9 mil with some extended capacity where you're not having to put two hands on it with no other point of contact here, you're going to have a little bit of a brace. So could be used, but no, no one's rolling around with this as a secondary. Everyone's just going to be carrying a Glock uh, when it comes down to it. Helmets are going to be the same as before. Same with the plates. Um, let's see what kind of equipment we're working with here. We've already talked about smokes, frags, flashbangs, stingers, slap charges. We've already talked about all those. And then what are their extra options they have here? Uh, so the marksman's also going to have uh, the wall breach, which is nice. Uh, but it doesn't look like they have any extra equipment there. So we'll move on to the support. Uh, try and keep this video chucking along. So here again, no one's going to be using a shotgun in support. Uh, in this game, you've just got access to these four different uh, fully auto belt fed weapons. So for me, we're going to be using 5.56. Five, uh, you're not going to be using a 240. Uh, you might be using a Mark 48. Um, if you needed to have that 308 caliber, uh, but just for ammo compatibility, most guys here on a, I mean, really a SWAT team is not going to be using any belt fed weapons, but uh, we just bring this because it's a 5.56 and it's easier to maneuver than it's going to be to move around uh, with the 308 rifle. And then same, same deal with a 338 normal mag. I mean, no one really wants to be just running around clearing a building with that. So of the four options available, minus a shotgun, because that's just dumb. Um, you'd want to be clearing a building with a saw more than any of these, which is why we take it. Again, same as before, suppressor if you can. Only option here is green tip. Shooter's preference on red dot or hollow. Here it looks like we've also got a 3.4 times or a 6x optic. Um, you know, maybe in a military setting, you're going to have a fixed power optic like that. But uh, again, we're, we're up here clearing buildings. I don't really want to clear a building with a 6, six times optic. So, same deal here. Uh, pistols are all the same, plus that same one that the marksman's got access to. Again, everyone's just using a Glock with a red dot um, when we get down to it. Let's see what other equipment we have here. Smokes, frags, flash, stinger. We've already talked about all of these so far, so nothing changes there. And then for our last piece of equipment, saying we talked about the benefits of the breach and shotgun, nothing changes with those. Supports also got access to a wall breach, which is very important. Hammer, we talked about someone in the stack needs to have that. Spy camera is unrealistic. Launcher, for the games, probably nice to have. Um, instead of having to walk up and use a wall breach, you can just do it from afar. Uh, but the rest of those we have already talked about. 
So now we'll move on to the last class here, the assault class. Um, so this is going to be very similar to the grenadier here. No one's going to be using the shotgun. Here the assault class has access to a couple of MP5s. Um, there's no reason for us to be rolling in shooting 9 mil. You know, 5.56 is just a, such a superior caliber. We're not going to be going in using 9 mil. Um, that's kind of a old old thing that old SWAT teams and special forces guys were using. But nowadays, uh, as technology continues, you know, we're going to be using 5.56 over any uh, SMGs. So same as before, Mark uh, M16, you know, 20 inch barrel, 14 and a half, and a shorter barrel. You know, any of these are acceptable. Really, when it comes down to it, M4 Mark 18 is what most team team guys are going to be using. Uh, again, URGI, it's just a fancier M4. It's just going to have an M block rail rather than the Picatinny all the way around. Here we've got the Scar 17 in a longer and shorter barrel. Um, I don't I don't know anyone off the top of my head that's actually using these. Um, typically guys are carrying a scar more in a DM roll or something like that um, in a larger caliber. So probably not something that your assaulters are gonna wanna use. Same deal here with the SMGs, we're probably not using them. URGI, HK416, these are all so similar. You know, that's going to be user preference and whatever the team actually issues you. The difference between a HK416, a URGI 14 and a half, a URGI carbine, M4 car, like we're talking super minutia changes here between all of those. Again, we do have the 300 blackout, which could be useful in some skill sets if you really want to keep your team quiet. So definitely, I would say that's worth picking up. And then the XM5 and the 6.8. Something I don't really have any experience with. Um, and I can just say from, you know, any little bit of research that I have done about it, it's probably not worth um, the upgrade into this when everyone's used to using 5.56 at the moment. Next, we got the pistols. Uh, again, options are the same here, so we won't beat the dead horse there. Just get you a Glock with a red dot and uh, all the points. You're going to be good to go. Same thing with the helmets and the uh, armor, like we talked about at the beginning. Use side armor and use level four plates. It's uh, pretty much what it comes down to. We'll get into our other stuff here. Uh, smokes, frags, flashbangs, stingers. We've kind of already talked about all these. Useful in the game, eh, not so useful in real life. People can still shoot back. Frags, useful if you are allowed to use those. Uh, flashbangs, gonna be like, Super S tier, definitely want to have those on the team. Stingers, don't know about in game, but real life, pretty worthless. Slap charge is very good for getting through locked doors. Thermal torch, no one's using that, just use bolt cutters. Gas grenade, not exactly how we deploy gas, but gas is definitely good to be used. And decoy grenades, uh, pretty dumb. And then back to our final piece of equipment. Again, the breach and shotgun is going to be super useful. Someone definitely needs to have that. Just three extra grenades of whatever type you need. Good to go. Oh, the uh, Assaulter has a wall charge now. I didn't know that. So I'm glad we're making this video so that everyone else knows that now. A wall charge is definitely a super useful piece of kit. So I didn't realize that the Assaulters had that. So videos coming forward, um, we're going to be using that on Assaulters so we don't have to necessarily use Grenadiers and people who don't have as good accuracy. Um, again, dynamic hammer, whether it's a claw, halligan, you know, a straight up breach, other breaching tool, whatever you guys use, definitely going to be good to have here. A battering ram, sledgehammer, all of the above. Someone needs to have this in the stack uh, for failed breaches. And spy camera, that's just future freaking movie magic. No one's using that. Um, launcher, good to go if you want to use that instead of a wall charge. And again, these are going to be more similar like the actual ways that we're going to deploy gas. Uh, but I think just for the game, it's a little easier to use uh, just the gas grenades. So we may end up unlocking this at some point, but for the time being, gas grenades is good enough for me. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, going through all the equipment here, sort of making a tier list of stuff. But those are the pieces of equipment that we're actually going to use on our SWAT team. 
and hopefully that helps you guys make a choice on what you want to use uh, when you guys are playing this game. So if you guys like the video, uh, drop a like, uh, say so in the comments, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. Um, if you guys hated this type of video, let me know that too and we'll make sure that we don't do anything else like this ever again. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around till the end of the video. Uh, you guys are the real MVPs and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.